You like wagons? Well, if you're in the United States, there's not a lot of options. But luckily, Volvo stays committed to this. The V60. Let's take a look. Inside the new V60 T6 inscription all-wheel drive. Now obviously the exterior proportions of this car as you saw from the montage are pretty striking. It doesn't look like they tried to jam too much in here. It's a very sleek cohesive exterior design. The fact that they have some different types of paint colors here like this blue denim which almost looks almost too light a blue almost like a baby blue in certain lights but you get it in a bright light or drab it does look good. It fits this car well but most of what you're going to be dealing with is the interior space and since this is a carryover of the new generation Volvo design which has been raved about from pretty much everybody else now you have it here in a wagon. The upper dash textures, you have real stitching, you have upper leather, uh, you have real wood accents or, or overlays, let's put it that way, which you, you have kind of have two options here. And pretty much everything else has a very high quality feel to it. The upper door textures, the door armrest, the alloy speaker grill, all the soft touch materials, it feels like a very high quality space. The steering wheel design, you have this two-tone, and you don't have anything in here that kind of burns or freezes your hands. It's all leather with this kind of center beat or center like uh, seam on it, and it gives you this good element of grip while looking pretty striking. Everything else is mostly matte textured. Uh, on the door panel, there's no gloss black plastic. They reserve that for around the vents, of course, around the center display, which looks disgusting right now, and just a little bit around the shifter. And I feel like the strongest aspect of this car is the way that your seating position is, the seating design. It's extremely easy to get comfortable, but let me talk a little bit more about that. Now for $2,200, you get the luxury seating package. And you can tell in terms of design in here, they look great, they feel great. You have extendable thigh cushions, you have adjustable bolsters, lumbar, and then you have the seat massaging feature, which has a couple different options for that for the driver and passenger. And I feel like if you're on a long road trip, and I, I drove this car a lot, specifically this model, that, that's a really smart move if you're traveling a lot or you're sitting in a lot of traffic. Now, these light-colored seats and these light-colored interiors, as much as they do look very nice, I wear jeans, and you can tell this thing's about got about 8,000 miles on it, and the blue dye from jeans has totally discolored the seats. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like light-colored interiors unless you know, you're constantly cleaning it or you're not wearing stuff that's going to stain them. So that's something you really want to look at. Now, in terms of everything else, the storage areas in the center armrest or center area is pretty decent. I find that, sadly, despite kind of like the good ergonomics in here, the armrest on the center area is too small. Like, you really have to move your seat farther back, and even then, it's not padded as well as it should be for a car of this type. But other than that, I mean, really, there's not too much to nitpick in here in terms of the usability or the comfort aspect of it. Now, one of the biggest things to talk about in a car like this is the infotainment and the sound system. The infotainment is much of the same of what I've talked about in every other Volvo vehicle. The difference here is they finally got the software matured enough where it doesn't lag as much. It's a lot smoother. There's not as many freeze-ups as there used to be. It's not as big of a deal breaker. The only problem still is since they don't have physical HVAC controls, everything's on the touchscreen. So when you get on here, get in on the inside on a cold day, you start this up, there's still a ton of lag trying to get your seat heater controls up, your temperature adjustment delays, or it's totally unusable for at least 30 seconds. It's something you're going to have to play with and see if you can deal with this every day. The big thing I will tell you that you want to spring the money for if you're in this car a lot and you listen to music is the Bowers and Wilkins upgrade for $3,300. And that may seem like a lot, 
but this is one of the few systems that has been properly engineered from when they built the car and designed it. And I'm gonna start working with an industry expert on testing audio in cars, measuring sound levels and all of that through software to, to show you and to teach you why some companies are just ripping you off when they charge you two to $3,000 for a premium setup and the speakers are garbage, like 50 to $100, or they just weren't properly engineered. In the case of this car, it was. The frequency response is, the, is excellent. The noise floor is great. There's not a lot of harmonic distortion. And your best bet in terms of settings is to go in here, set the studio mode to all drivers, and that's the cleanest you're gonna get. Now, typically I switch it from all drivers to driver because I like the dynamics a little bit more. Uh, it seems more focused to me. And then the EQ in here is legit. You can, you can change it based on your taste. And obviously it's not as neutral or flat, but this is a very even, very high quality setup that I think you're gonna enjoy. If you're not gonna buy this car, get in one of these and just test it out for yourself and then compare it to similar other audio systems like all the Harmons, it is, it is light years better than that. So I know I ran that into the ground, but I wanted to make that point. Let's check out the back. Now with everybody SUV and CUV crazy, this combines the best of a wagon and a hatchback. It's a longer vehicle. And when you open this up, you can either kick to open or you can use the electronic opener. It is a very quick operating electronic hatch. This is a very wide opening. It goes very deep and with the seats folded down, this is a ton of space. The only thing you're gonna notice because the roof line is a little bit lower on this, you don't have the height, but I, I feel like this is a great balance for most people. It's very easy to get things in and out of here as well. Uh, it's not super high. And you know, it's just well designed. The cargo nets, the width, the, the tray on the bottom is high quality. Everything feels like it's very solidly put together. But you know what, let's talk about some of the technical details in the shop and then we'll take this for a drive. Welcome to the underbody segment with the Volvo V60 Estate or wagon, <laughs> however you want to say it, on the Ben Pack lift. Now, if you saw the S60 sedan video I did, this is on the same global architecture as that which is called the SPA platform. And what they're doing here is they're platform sharing. So what you're gonna see is the same thing underneath of this as the S60, the XC60, and this is how they're able to turn out new models. Now this is a little bit longer, it's more of an elongated vehicle than the S60, but you're seeing all the same components. You have an aluminum lower control arm, an aluminum upright, an aluminum fork, uh, your knuckle is aluminum, and you have shock absorbers. This is not a strut front suspension. It is a double wishbone. So you're also going to see that your shock absorbers have electronic control units on them, and this is optional. And I will say this, and I'll talk about it in the drive. I don't feel like the extra cost is necessary, considering there is not a noticeable difference between your different drive modes, at least not enough to warrant the cost and the complexity. Now, when you look at the entire front half of the car, and towards the back, it's covered up. You have these composite covers which, to, which help reduce NVH. You have little cutouts here to direct air upwards to cool the transmission or the drivetrain. And you have your drive shaft that runs along the center with your exhaust. It's your typical things that you're finding on most cars, except Volvo does a much better job with their undercoating and just their underbody coverings than some manufacturers do. Let's take a look at the back. In the rear of the V60, much like the S60, they look identical here. You have this massive chunk of aluminum for the, the lower control arm. Your knuckle is all aluminum. You have a huge cast steel upper control arm and a stamped steel lower toe arm. Pretty much everything else you're gonna notice here is traditional stuff. Your sway bar, the biggest highlight that stands out, this guy this composite leaf spring that runs across the whole thing. They do not use coil springs here like in traditional vehicles. And a lot of this is for packaging. They're able to lower the load floor of the vehicle or your cargo space down farther without having to try to figure out where the hell to jam a coil spring. It just creates more space for packaging. The other thing is they have a ton of body adhesives and you know your composite inner wheel well liners 
uh, your wheel aprons, and all the coverings here that help to reduce road noise. Now, of course, the V60 gets Volvo's all-wheel drive system. This is a looks just like a Haldex unit. You have your ECU. This has a electro-hydraulic clutch system that's able to release and engage a multi-plate clutch based on the demand and then also pretty much go front wheel drive only when you're driving to be more fuel efficient and that is something that this vehicle i've noticed more so than the other ones does a great job but i'll talk about that during the drive but let's get this thing out on the road All right, let's set off in the V60 T6 all-wheel drive. It's plenty potent. I think that's what you're gonna wanna know. I've talked about this many times, about this four-cylinder that is turbocharged, supercharged, direct injected. When you start to put something like this in the bigger vehicles, like the XC90, you feel the weight so much. And here, this is perfectly adequate for almost every single person that's gonna get in here. In fact, you're probably not gonna notice it much from a V6. The only negative part is it sounds like a giant vacuum cleaner. And you know, if you're coming from a V6 or a V8, you might notice that right away. Other than that, it is smooth and pretty well isolated. Transmission performance, it's an Azen unit, Japanese gearbox. There are very minimal gear shocks. This favors comfort over speed. The upshifts are pretty quick, but manually shifting this with the center console, there's no paddles here, is pointless. So if you're looking for a smooth operator on the highway, that is why I would buy this. The second part is I, I drove this on about a 320 mile round trip, and I did it in a lot of ways to test the suspension, also to test the comfort and the pro pilot assist in this technology package and let me just verify the name of it i'm sorry it's called the advanced package and you get pro pilot assist which gives you adaptive cruise control which means it will slow down if there's a car in front of you or speed up when they start to speed up it will also actively steer to keep you in the lanes and then during a traffic jam if you come up on a car in front of you it will slow you all the way down to stop and if you're still rolling, it will bring you back up to speed. And I found this is one of the most handy reasons why I would invest that type of money on that package. If you're not on the highway and you're not in a lot of traffic, I wouldn't invest that kind of money in it. It is a lot. Now, getting on to other things, there are a couple different drive modes and this has the adaptive suspension, which I talked about in the shop. I feel like it doesn't do enough to warrant the extra thousand dollars. It certainly doesn't make the ride smooth enough, which is what I would like but it does have an eco mode in terms of your drive modes. And the eco mode really worked on the highway. It helps to freewheel, disconnect, or decouple the transmission. It almost goes into a neutral state when you let off the throttle. It's more aggressive to go into start-stop. And I was able to get over 30 miles per gallon with an average speed of above 70 miles an hour on the highway. And I think that is great for this car. It's one of the main highlights, and I'm glad I got it on the highway to test that. Now, in terms of handling, this feels very direct. The steering is, you don't feel anything through the steering. Really, it, it's a very isolated drive. It's a good handling car for what it is for its size. But my biggest problem, and I've said this about other Volvo products, is it feels like there's not enough wheel travel in the suspension, namely in the back. You know, I got over some bad pavement in Michigan and it felt like the back end, you'd hit a pothole or whatever, and it feels like the whole car would bottom out. And I feel like at a price point like this, as a luxury car, they need to work on ride suppleness. Namely, if they're gonna put adaptive suspension in, they need a true soft mode, which this doesn't have. Now, just because I said that doesn't mean that this is a choppy ride. Over smoother pavement, you almost never notice the harshness or the crashing that it does over bad pavement. All the time, it's refined, it's very, very quiet. And I think that's the, the one of the most the, the biggest pro about the V60 is the level of refinement. This is a great isolated space. And when you add in things like the seat massagers, the seat coolers or heaters, and of course, 
the Bo uh, Bowers and Wilkins audio system. This is a car that you're gonna drive every day in utter comfort. The passengers are gonna be in comfort and you have the cargo capacity to use this year around. Add the fact that the all wheel drive system is pretty good. Of course, it's front wheel drive bias, but when you start to drive it more, there's not a huge penalty for pushing it around. And that's one of the things I noticed driving this more is you think it would roll around like a couch because of its feel. But the all wheel drive system does a good job in terms of the Haldex in the rear end. It's very proactive to, to pull you through the turns without turning it into kind of like an understeer fest that you would get with a typical front wheel drive car. But that's enough of this. Let's get into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Volvo V60 wagon. Well, I think this says enough. You have a hatch, you have an insane amount of cargo capacity, and you have a legitimate sedan that you can put people in the back seats. It's a total cruiser. It is insanely comfortable. It's pretty damn refined. And with the T6 version all wheel drive, it's an all season vehicle with the right tires. The ability for it to get around corners is something that Volvo is getting better at. It handles far better. If you're you know, in the twisties or in the mountains, you're gonna enjoy driving it for real. The turbocharged and supercharged motor, despite it sounding like a shop vac, is extremely quick in here. You're not gonna want for anything more. The transmission is buttery smooth. And you know, it's, it's a very good luxury car for what it is. But here's the cons. Much like the other Volvos I've driven, do not get the adjustable or the uh, adaptive damper setup for $1,000. I think it's a waste of money. It does nothing for the ride quality. If, if anything, it makes it worse. And I will have to say the S60 rode better than this, but I just, I just don't like the ride quality over harsh pavement. That is the one ding that I can give this because everything else is solid. It's a quiet interior space. It's refined. It just feels really good. It has one of the best sound systems in the market under like $70,000. The seating design with the massagers is a great feature. Most of the electronics function pretty well. And the safety features, are they work insanely good if you're on a road trip for this generation, of course. Could it always be better? Yes. But aside from the ride quality, I'm, I'm super happy with this. And again, I mentioned this in the drive, but getting 30 miles per gallon on the highway is a real treat for making this much horsepower. I love the wagon form factor. I think most people, if you're looking for a wagon, this is going to make you want to slather yourself in cocoa butter and roll around in it. But other than that, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm on my laptop right now. This is the gentleman you're leaving me for? Very well. I hate this savage geese. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of them. Just like this.